Okay, this is the exciting second part, right? I've got this as my equations. I'm going to make a matrix out of this and solve it. And even better yet, I'm going to show you how to get these numbers out um, of your calculator out of the matrix, which is kind of a cool thing. Okay, so I'm, I can represent this system of equations as this matrix here. Um, 1, 14, 14, negative 1, 11, 0, negative 1, 0, 15, Right, and then that is times I1, I2, I3 equals 0, 22, 22. Okay. And then if this is matrix A, we're going to make this one B, and the answer, this answer matrix will be A inverse B. Now, that would be hard to do, except our calculator can do this for us, right? So let's clear, okay? And the first thing to do is to type this matrix in. So let's go second matrix, over to edit, and uh, let's do A, right? And if it's not a 3x3 three three matrix, make it a 3x3. Three three. Go 3, enter, 3, enter, right? And now we're going to type these in, and it goes left to right. So 1, negative 1, negative 1, 14, 11, 0. 14, 0, 15. Alright, so let's just double check our matrix here. Right? Let's zoom in here. Oh, look at that. The calculator needs to be moved over a little bit. Okay. So let's just double check our matrix. We've got 1, negative 1, negative 1, 14, 11, 0, 14, 0, 15. Okay. Now we're good. So I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to go matrix again. And I'm going to go down to uh, B. And, oops. Sorry. you got to go edit, then down to B, enter. Make it a 3 by 1 if you haven't yet. Right? And then our um, answer matrix is 0, 22, 22. So 0, 22, 22. Okay. All right. Let's go a little wider here on the camera. Here we go. Okay. So now we can see everything there. Okay, so now now we're all set. Now we're going to quit and we're going to we're going to do this operation here. So I go second matrix, barf up the A, invert it, right, and then I'm going to go second matrix B, right, and now I'm going to do something kind of interesting. I'm going to go storage matrix. I'm going to store it actually in C. Now notice that C is already made. You don't have to make the matrix first. It'll just make it on the fly if you just if you skip that step. In other words, you don't have to declare that matrix. You can just say to C. So I'm going to take A invert it, multiply matrix multiply by B. I'm going to store the results in C. All right now, if you look, those are all our answers. There's the A1, which is our I1, right? Okay. So if you look at that, I1 went through A1, and there's the answer to A1. So that's correct. Okay. A2 is our I2, as luck would have it. Okay, I didn't pick that on purpose, but there it is. And there it is in the calculator, right? And then um, it turns out that this value here, that 0.457, is that intermediate value that I used to calculate V3. Okay, now there's two ways you can do this. From now on, we just, we just, we've got the ammeters, right? The ammeters is all this does. It, it solves for what the currents are. From here, there's lots of ways you can do this. Right, so like for example, V1 is just going to be 5 times I1, and I1 is this guy right there, 1.0812. I can either go 5 times 1.0812 and get an approximate answer, but if it's bugging you that we have to type those numbers by, by, uh, by hand from this, let me just show you something that we figured out by Googling, okay? I can take the matrix C and I can actually index it. Watch this. Second matrix C. And then you can put parentheses here, okay? So I'm going to go 1, comma 1, okay? So this is, uh, what is it? It's, it's uh, uh, row, it's down 1, it's the first one, and then it's over 1. <coughs> there it is, right? I just got that number out of there, right? So then I can go times 5, right? Okay? That's kind of fun, isn't it? And there it is all unrounded, right? And then if I want the, the, uh, the next one, right? I can go second entry, second entry. There it is. If I want the next element, I go 2, 1. 
I can barf that out. There's 0 0.623, right? And that's going to be this reading on this guy here. But there's no no voltmeter there, right? And then if I want the 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 third element of that array, which is I3, right? I can make this 3, 1. And there it is, right? 0.457. And if I want to get this voltmeter reading, that's this current here is I3, so I go that times 8. That's pretty slick, isn't it? I think that's really slick. Okay, so again, with, with Kirchhoff's laws, what you're going to do is you're going to set up the, the equations, do, the, um, you do your junction equation. Sometimes there's one junction equation, sometimes there's two. So you have to check it out. If you get a unique equation, then you've got a couple junction equations. Then you set up your loop equations like that, right? Then you, you mash the equations so that they take this form. Always I1, then I2, then I3, all the coefficients, right? Okay. And you rearrange these things and so that you've got the answers over there, all the constants are over there, all the coefficients are here. All the ones with I1 in it are in this column, I2 in this column, I3 in this column. Then you turn it into matrices, right? And then when you do this operation here, you're going to get that. If you store it, where is that? If you store it just like that, right? If you store it in a, um, in a matrix, you can actually index that matrix, right? So I can go second matrix, C, right? And then I can index, if I want the first element, I go 1, 1, right? If I want the second one, I go... Two, one. This is something we just figured out. We're all excited about this, right? And if I want the third one, I go 3, 1. There we go. Kirchhoff's Law. Some people love them. Some people don't.